We are going to talk about the midterm exam, and so this is digital design. The hope, Mr. Uh, uh, Kona, is that you can do this one first put it available and I'll post it and then I'll uh, let the other section know that it's available. So sorry you don't get an unfair advantage. All right, so there was you in front. You, you seemed like you really wanted to, yeah, you in the purple shirt. <laughs> you really wanted me to do this. So you get the first shot at question. Yeah, put you on the spot. Can we do like a complicated game? A complimented or complicated? complicated? All right, let's do a complicated one. So let's say we have a, a sum of terms, right? And we're going to have uh, four inputs, four inputs, right? So that means I'll have um, one, two, Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifteen, and then I'll have the uh, the don't care. And all of a sudden, I'm not remembering the uh, uh, designation for don't cares. I'll do this. Then I have don't cares of uh, zero and fourteen. Remember what don't care means. All right, so there we go. I have A, B, I have C, D. Yeah, some people already know they're going to do really well on the exam. Good for them. That is a uh, properly generated K map, and just so you remember, this is location 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, oops, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Remember, because we switched the position here, you know, that these lines are going to be switched and uh, these columns are going to be switched for the numbers. So what do we have? We have a 1, a 1, a 1. Oh, you decided to come back, huh? Oh, that's all right. It's not like I took down, you know, your name or anything like that. He's feeling guilty. How about that? Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15. Then we are left with don't cares. Alrighty now. So, how do we get the biggest circle possible? This is where it gets a little tricky. Are you ready for trickiness? I know that I can absorb this one by circling this as the largest circle. All right. So usually you want to find the ones that are kind of like sitting out in the middle of nowhere and need to be grabbed. I've got this one here that its only combination then and the biggest one will be to absorb this. Now, 
Now this is where it gets interesting and you could do it two different ways. To grab this one, I could do this entire row, but I could also grab these two and these two at the same time. So, so far I've circled one, two, three, so I've got three, uh, um, three elements. Let me do all these first. So this one over here was such that A was one and C was one. Agree? The corners will be identified when D prime as well as B prime. I grab this pair right here when I had C prime, but what's going on? Which row is here? It's when it's B prime. Which leaves me this one right here. Is there anything I could do to grab four for this? We've got, uh, no, can't do anything over here, can't do anything over here. We can go up and we can go, no, we can't go that way. So the only thing we can do is this right here, which means the final will have three elements. So this will be A prime, C prime, D prime. Is that a nice complex one? Question. Which corners do you have circled together? It's all the corners. This one, this one, this one, and this one. They all work as one? Yeah, they all work as one. Huh. Remember, you can group four together and you can actually wrap there because when you wrap, what are you doing? In this case, look, B is zero. And if you wrap all the way down to the bottom row, B is still zero. All right? Yes, sir? Could you go over what you circled and how you got the target? Well, um, again, the question was, what did I circle and why did I decide on that? The first thing I did, and this comes from experience, is I want to find the ones that might be a little bit out there aware, away from everybody else. Notice I didn't put zeros in here, right? You could put zeros in here. And in fact, if, if we get anal retentive and say put the zeros in too, I would suggest you put it in after you've done all the circling because when it's empty, it's a lot easier to see, right? This one was sitting out here kind of lonely. There was nothing above it, nothing to the, uh, to the left of it. There was something below and to the right. And so my attempt is to get that so, and, and so that it had as many ones grouped together. And that was where that position was. And once I've got one of them, what looks like the most remote one, and that's what I would recommend, one that looks like the most remote, remote one, then you're able to see, all right, what else has not been picked up. This one up here in the corner looks pretty darn remote too. Nothing to the left of it, nothing below it. What about above it? Oh yeah, there's one above it, and then, oh, there's one over on this side. It's don't care, but I could still use it, right? And so that instructed me to do the four corners. So now I had the four corners done, and I, and I took care of this. And which ones do I have left? I had this one, this one, and this one. Well, well I could put this one, number one, and number nine together, I could also take the one to the side. You know, this has no, uh, you can't group anything to the right or below, but you can do something to the left and above. So I combine those two together. And remarkably, doing that, I didn't, you know, I could have circled this one down here as well. But then this one would still be left without a pair. And by Getting this one out there, which is uh, far away from anybody else, I was able to uh, absorb this one, midterm number nine in there. So the only one left is this one. And there's nothing to the right, there's nothing to the left, there's nothing below, so it's obviously going to have to be uh, only a grouping of two. Okay, was that a complex problem?
Do you want me to do another one of these? Was that a yes or no? Yes. All right. Do one with more than four variables? Nah, you know what? I could do it, but it would be a waste of time. Hint, hint. Oh, you never know. Okay, what happens if I give you this? All right, there we go. How do I minimize? Well, by the way, what is this equation? A naught, B naught, C naught, or A naught, B, C naught, or A, B naught, C naught. Is that minimal? Well, let's see. By the way, even if we ask you to use algebraic uh, uh, properties to be able to find um, the minimum, you can always check your work with a K map. You can do both. And then figure out how you get from A to B. Oh, that's pretty tricky. So let's see. Uh, A not B not C. Oh, that's this one right here, right? Zero. In fact, I can just pull it off the table. Oops, one. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, 1, 2, 3, or 0, 1, 2, 3, so this is 2, that's that one over there, right? And this is, what is that called? Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we go. So what is my, wh how do I minimize this? Well, it should be inherently obvious for this one, right? What do I circle? What do I circle? This one, and then this with this, right? So this circle and then this other circle, this one is uh, B naught, C naught, and then the other one is, looks like it's going to be A naught, C naught. Even though this could be C naught, B naught, uh, or A naught. This is probably nice, nice and cleaner, anyhow. But hey, look at that, we minimize that. Which means if we went through algebraic equations to identify what to minimize, what do you notice up here? What's one area you could minimize? Aren't those two together simply B not C not? Now the other thing that you have to keep in mind too is when you have an equation like this, it might be useful to when you're doing the, uh, the combination. This is, remember the same as F is equal to A not B not C not or A B not C not and I could pull this over here because of which identity? Learn it. <laughs> Say that again? Oh. Distributive? Is that right? So, is it distributive or commutative? Oh, it might be commutative, right? So, you may also need to say 
A not B not C not or A not B C not. Notice that this is the same as this and you're able to do that because of what property? <coughs> Remember when you have A or B it's the same as just A so that's the endempotent, endempotent law and then when we want to Remember uh, distributed here for a second, right? And then remember this is nothing more than uh, B prime, C prime, A or A, oops, A or A prime, or A prime, C prime, B or B prime, and that's distributive property, and then a or A prime is one due to the identity, right? And so the eventual answer you're going to get is F is equal to B prime, C prime, or A prime, C prime. All right, question? What do you have written beside that? It's A prime, B prime plus A prime? Uh, will you, where? Beside the, not the bottom, but like the third from the bottom up, right under the K map. Oh, this is the same. Oh, hold it. That should be C prime. Also. That should be C prime right there, yeah. But the big question is, does does this do anything for you? Does that does that really help you any? You're down to two gates. But you also have all those knots. So, all right, that is about all the time we have. Thank you very much.